Walk us to Windy City. Come down here and see the Pittsburgh, because it's a bird thing. We wouldn't miss St. Patrick's Day Parade for no, anything. No. Not even a foot of snow is going to stop here. No, absolutely no, not. Absolutely not. Stay home in this. Absolutely. Weather. That's absolutely. Right. absolutely. From WPXI TV, Channel 11 News, your only 24 hour news source. This is the official tape of the Blizzard of 93. Reporting for Channel 11 News, David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan. Hello, I'm Peggy Finnegan from Channel 11 News. I'm David Johnson. What you're about to witness is a piece of history, the blizzard of 1993 that hit western Pennsylvania. Now, in other times, people would save newspapers or photographs to remember and pass them on to their children. But we're able to show you much more of the storm, a one hour of dramatic pictures from the Channel 11 News team of the worst weather to hit western Pennsylvania in a century. We hope you enjoy this look back at the blizzard of 93, Four days that some people will never forget. And we start with Thursday night, March 11th, 1993, when Dennis Bowman and his experts from the Carnegie Science Center gave us the first hint of what could be ahead. And we should just see a day of increasing clouds tomorrow with some snow arriving tomorrow night. And that's the thing that everybody's talking about is this big storm that's forming out in the southwestern part of the country that is going to be affecting us. Now, let's take a look at uh, what the uh, best case scenario is on that storm path. And that would be for this to kind of hug the coast and stay out to sea a little bit, in which case places like Boston and New York and in eastern Pennsylvania, Philadelphia get hammered with heavy snow and uh, we get uh, uh, not quite as much snow. The storm path would actually look like this. This is the low pressure system we're talking about, gathering moisture from the uh, Gulf of Mexico and then swinging up that way. And here's the way the snow breakdown would look in the best case scenario. We would end up with two to four inches of snow here in the southwestern Pennsylvania area, including Pittsburgh with uh, old four to six uh, over through the Laurel Mountains and uh, some of the southern uh, mountains and on up into the northern mountains of Pennsylvania, getting anywhere from six to 10 inches of snow. And that could be a real mess. Now let's come back here and take a look at what the uh, worst case scenario would be, and that would be for the storm path to run. And we're talking about Saturday, running right on up into Pittsburgh, up right up the Appalachian chain. The main focus of the storm would be in the tri-state area. If that were to happen, the storm movement would look like this, still gathering that moisture, but focusing right into the Pittsburgh area and your snow amounts hope you're bracing yourself, the snow amounts would look like that. 10 to 15 inches of snow in the southwest Pennsylvania area, and some of the mountains getting anywhere from 20 to 30 inches of snow. And it was with that we had a clue of what could happen next. Now Friday, March 12th, people getting ready for the storm. Tonight, the grocery stores were packed as people stocked up and planned for an indoor weekend. And road crews hope to get a jump start on the storm. As you can see, the salt trucks are filled up and ready to hit the road. And when the snow comes, the crews will be working around the clock. But there could be problems in parts of Westmoreland County where they say there is a shortage of road salt. Prepared as we were, overnight, people around the area wondered, will the storm really be that bad? We woke up Saturday, March 13th, to find out the snow had started. Channel 11 News was on the air as the storm hit. You're watching Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. The station with more news, more often. Live from Television Hill, this is Channel 11 News Saturday morning with Laurie Savage, John Fedko with sports, and Kevin Benson with Carnegie Science Center weather. Now, from the station voted best in the state by the Associated Press, Channel 11 News Saturday morning. Good morning, I'm Laurie Savage. We warned you about it yesterday, and here comes the snowstorm that could be one for the record books. While most of us slept, the snow started coming down in Pittsburgh a couple of inches so far, but this is only the beginning of the blizzard of 93. It didn't catch PennDOT crews by surprise, though. We caught them this morning, getting their equipment ready for what'll be a big day for them. And if you have to hit the road today, listen to this advice from PennDOT's William Sacco. The first thing is, if you're, if you're going to venture out in a, in, a, in a situation like that, make sure you're using equipment that, that can handle it. Uh, people should not proceed out on the roads with bulb tires, uh, with low tanks of gas, with coolant systems that are defective, uh, with, with any kind of vehicle that has, a, that, that has a known chance of breaking down on the road. Now, along with your car, you should be prepared as well. 
If you are going outside, please dress warmly and in layers. Now, Kevin Benson, along with our storm tracker system, are keeping an eye to the weather. And Kevin, by the time this is all over, how much snow can we expect? Well, Lori, I've been talking with our weather experts at Carnegie Science Center, and before it's finished, I'll show you a snowfall map in just a second. We could expect about a foot of snow here. Here's a look at that storm as it continues to barrel right on towards us here in western Pennsylvania. The snow has already begun. It's just going to get gradually worse right on through the day. Huge, powerful, dangerous, remarkable, incredible. Just some of the words that forecasters are using to describe this storm. Just take a look at the magnitude of that baby. It is huge. There's been snowfall even down along the gulf coast states chattanooga tennessee picked up seven inches of snow and thunder and lightning here's what we expect for the immediate pittsburgh area now this is official from the weather service it's a blizzard warning there's a blizzard warning in effect we're expecting snow eight to twelve inches one to two feet of snow possible in the mountains not only is it snow but please be advised the winds are going to be another big factor winds are going to cause blizzard conditions there'll be winds thirty to fifty or sixty miles per hour not only will you have blowing and drifting snow, but you're going to have wind chills 15 to 30 degrees below zero. Again, Lori, we're not here to alarm anyone. We're just here to help you get through this thing and remind you to be safe, use your head, be sensible, because this is a dangerous storm. Very quickly, you can see again what we're looking for here. 8 to 12 in western Pennsylvania. More snow as you head over here into the mountains. This is really going to be the big news story of the weekend. We will continue to track it for you here at Channel 11, along with forecasters at Carnegie Science Center. I'll have a full forecast and more details coming up in just a few minutes. Till then, I'm Kevin Benson, and now with more news, here's Lori Savage. Okay, Kevin, you're the man this morning, and we'll be checking with you throughout the morning for updates. Now, our Pete Yaksik is outside getting a look at how things are right now. Good morning, Pete. How you doing, Lori? We're getting pelted here in Ross Township. You can see the 279 North Expressway behind me. The plows have been over, but again, already snow covered. Uh, the same goes for the ramp here as well. The uh, plow came by about 15 minutes ago. The PennDOT crews are working around the clock. They will be hitting the interstates first. That would be Interstate 79, 70, and the parkways east and west. Then they will attack other four-lane highways, such as routes 51, 65, 28. Despite the fact the storm was gathering steam at 10 o'clock on Saturday, March 13th, Pittsburgh loves a parade. Our Pete Yaksik is live downtown in Pittsburgh. Pete, what's going on out there? Lori, you said it best, believe it or not. I guess it's rain, sleet, or snow. The parade will go on. Organizers met earlier this morning. They thought they were going to cancel, but they decided to let the parade go on. It was only canceled one time in its history. That was back in the 1950s, and that was because of heavy snowfall. Day for a break. The afternoon of March 13th begins with our local area feeling the full effect of the storm's fury. Kevin Benson got in the thick of it all. If you don't have to go out, really, the, the advice is don't go out. Do you think we can go over here to this car? Let's see if we can get the microphone cable over here. My, my photographer, Timmy Holloman, doing a heck of a job here. Just want to show you, if your car has been parked outside for the entire event here, just take a look at some of the snow that we're dealing with here. You're talking about, you really have to dig deep down there. Really have to dig deep to find... The windshield, let alone the windshield wipers. So you're talking about some big-time snowfall amounts. There was no let-up in the blizzard Saturday, March 13th, 6 p.m. Western Pennsylvania is in a snow emergency.
spinning out and shoveling out. People all across our area try to deal with a severe blizzard shocking our state. A storm so serious that Governor Casey declares Pennsylvania a state of emergency. Good evening, everyone. I'm Margaret Shortridge. The blizzard of 93 brings Pennsylvania to a standstill. Governor Casey has closed all interstates. That includes Interstate 79, 70, Interstate 80, and the Pennsylvania Turnpike has also been shut down. Cars that are on the roads are being escorted off by state troopers. Driving is near impossible. All motorists are asked to stay home and leave the roads open for emergency vehicles. And in Pennsylvania, the National Guard is on alert to help out. Pittsburgh International Airport is closed. That's leaving thousands of travelers stranded. But the airport is asking employees not to leave so the vendors can keep open to feed the stranded people. We will go live to the airport in just a few moments. Every fire department in the county, 214 of them, they're all manned around the clock. They're going to do this for 24 to 36 hours. That should give us pretty good Emergency time. crews gather at a command post yeah, in the Strip District. Workers there are one. trying to make sure yeah, some we'll roads are open so emergency vehicles can get through. In a few moments, we will go live to the command post in the Strip, and we will speak with the man in charge. The Carnegie Science Center weather team is up and on top of the weather situation. Tonight we have both Kevin Benson and Dennis Bowman tracking the blizzard. Kevin is reporting from outside Channel 11. Dennis Bowman is here in the studio. First we go to Dennis. Dennis, you have been here all day long. What is the latest? Margaret, I tell you, this is turning out to be a storm of historical proportions. The greatest snowfall prior to right now that we've ever had for 24 hours is 22 inches of snow, and that was on December 17, 1890. That record has been standing for a long time. Right now, we're up to 18 inches of snow out at Pittsburgh International Airport. Some other weather watcher observations, Morgantown 15, Butler 14, 13 in New Kensington, and a foot of snow in Greensburg, 18 down in Uniontown. But more importantly, let's show you what we're expecting here now as this storm just continues to rage across the area and to do its thing. By noon Sunday, we'll look for, oh, a 10 to 15 swath across northwest PA and running right through the heart of Allegheny County, including Pittsburgh. We're going to be somewhere between ranging from 16 to two, 16 inches to 2 feet of snow and in the mountains to the east up to 3 feet of snow. We'll have a full report for you a little bit later on. Margaret? Okay, thanks very much, Dennis. Well, coming up later, as Dennis said, we will join him. We'll also join Kevin Benson, who will be live outside with the latest on the conditions outside. Well, as we said at the top of tonight's show, Governor Casey has closed the Pennsylvania Turnpike and all interstates. That includes I-70, I-80, and I-79. Our Pete Yatsik is live by Interstate 279 near the Perrysville exit. Pete, how bad are the conditions out there? It's frigid, Margaret. As you said, we are on 279. You can see behind me, there is some sporadic traffic. That's because the state police and the local police cannot man every exit, so people are getting off. But I guess once they are spotted, they are being escorted off. 279, the expressway here, is part of the interstate system. We spent much of the day throughout the area. We saw plenty of tie-ups and plenty of frustrated people. Simply put, Penn Daughter is asking everyone to stay off the roads. This is why. The highways, interstates, side streets, and back roads of greater Pittsburgh, most if not all, like ski trails. And behind the wheel, extremely low visibility, little control, other motorists all over the road, and short, new meaning to treacherous driving conditions. Here, a small grade on Penn Avenue in East Liberty becomes a virtual mountain to climb. Vehicles line up, taking turns. This man, though, gives up, ditching his car. I'm going to catch the bus. I'm going to catch the bus, you know. Then Sherry Cyber of Garfield, her van of all days just breaks down. And she says, as far as a helping hand... <laughs> and no one will help, no one. They can't leave the gas station. This guy got a bad back. You, I'll tell you. Beefed up PennDOT crews, however, are working around the clock, focusing on interstates, hills, curves, and intersections. But they're simply unable to keep up with continues to be a literal blowing blanket of snow. We're plowing. Anytime you get over two inches of the snow, you're in a plowing mode. You really can't spread too many materials. But it's with all the, uh, the winds that we have and the, and the blowing, it's once you plow the road, not too much later, it's covered back over again. 
Meanwhile, home and business owners shovel away. And despite just about every business and event being closed or canceled, contractor Don Fennell works plowing the Civic Arena parking lot and others at shopping malls just to stay ahead, just like Penlot. Since 5 o'clock this morning, we were here, and we've done it three times, all the lots. Well, you just heard one man earlier in the uh, cast air say that uh, he is going to take the bus home. Well, now we're told Pat Bus Service has also been canceled. So the blizzard of 93 very much taking its toll and making the roads literally potential death traps. Stay home. Reporting live in Ross Township. Pete Yaksik, Channel 11 News. Margaret. Pete, I know that the interstates and the main roads take first priority, but do you have any idea when they're even going to get near those secondary roads? The PennDOT spokesman you just heard told me earlier that he hopes to uh, get to the secondary roads once the snow stops. That's possibly tomorrow night. He wants to have those roads cleared for the Monday morning rush hour. But right now, the task at hand is getting those interstates cleared off, then they'll get to the secondary roads. There's really no reason for anybody to be out in weather like this. Okay, thanks very much. Pete Yatsik reporting live from near 279. As we told you at the top of the show, the Pittsburgh International Airport is also closed. Jennifer Ankoviak is st standing by live there. Jennifer, what's going on there? Margaret, I am not alone by any means. Me and 5,000 other people are here at Pittsburgh International, stranded because of this horrible weather outside. The few that you see behind me at the U.S. Air desks are just kind of stragglers trying to make some alternate travel plans for tomorrow. Most people by far are beyond these gates and into the air side of the airport facility. They're already trying to set up little areas for themselves to call home for this evening. I had the opportunity to talk with some of the people here earlier this afternoon, and here's what they had to say. Just one runway remains open at the airport. 16 plus inches of snow are on the ground here. 12 more are expected. U.S. Air stopped all operations since 2 o'clock this afternoon. A few flights to Florida did try to get out, but couldn't. Uh, you're talking 14,000 people that we normally carry on a Saturday that's inbound and, you know, connection passengers. So we have approximately close to uh, six, 700 passengers here in the terminal that's going to stay overnight. And so we're going to provide them with blankets and all that because hotels are full. And uh, plus, I don't think we really want the passengers to uh, go out on the freeway. To um, It's pretty dangerous out there. So for 5,000 people, the airport will be home tonight. Julie Cayo and her five-month-old son are trying to get to her husband. Do you have enough supplies for the baby? What about diapers and for formula? Or That's the first thing that I'm worried about. Because I find a drugstore downstairs, they have formula. I just bought it. You want to look at it? here i think i will buy more for the baby i don't have diapers they have diapers in the drugstore but small size not can use for it for him Margaret, i did talk to some people from u.s air who said that tonight don't expect any movement from here everybody that is here will stay here the next hope for any movement is not until tomorrow afternoon maybe three or four o'clock will be the first chance we'll try to get any flights out of here reporting live from pittsburgh international airport jennifer antkoviak channel 11 news so jennifer it looks like they'll be reopening it tomorrow Right now, that is what they're shooting for, that everything depends on this weather. Again, they're expecting 12 more inches out here. The winds have continued to pick up, so even uh, if we don't get a whole lot more snow, the visibility continues to be a problem out here. People are watching the situation very closely, and they're going to try to open it up as soon as possible. If you've been listening to our advice, you are hopefully staying inside nice and warm. Well, Kevin Benson is about to head outside to let us know what the conditions are at this moment. Kevin? Thank you, Margaret. I didn't volunteer for this job, folks. This is what happens when you're a low man on the totem pole. They were going to send Margaret out, but she refused, so I guess I'm going to have the duties here. We're just inside the Channel 11 studios right now. Take a look through the airlock here in the double doors. Are you ready for this? I don't know if I am either, but here we go. Let's head outside, and we're going to have another camera pick us up out here. Here's my photographer, Tom Brissett. He's been standing outside already, and this gives you just a little bit of a feel for what's happening out here. Basically, two elements we're talking about. Number one, the snow, and it continues to fall from the sky and be blown around. Number two is the snow drift. Take a look at this baby here. I'll see if I can't kick some of this out of the way for you here. 
and you can see just how severely the snow is drifting out here. Now, I'm standing on hard pavement right here. Here is the snow drift around one of the vehicles in the parking lot, and you can see it's a couple of feet high already. Dennis was mentioning we have, uh, what, 16, 18 inches of snow down. The wind is gusting along at 40 miles per hour, gusting even higher than that. So. Really, the wind chill makes it feel like it's about 20 degrees below zero out here. It's a little bit too early to talk about school cancellations right now, but we do have hundreds of other cancellations that are pouring into our newsroom. Our Lori Savage is standing by at our 24-hour news source with an update. Lori. Well, Margaret, let's put it this way. If it isn't canceled, it should be. There is no event, no errand so important that you have to brave the roads to get there. It's just that simple. Now, if you're concerned about church tomorrow, we have word from the Pittsburgh Diocese. Pittsburgh Catholics have been given dispensation for Mass tomorrow, so there is no pressing need for Catholics around the city to brave the elements to get to church. Now, as for all the uh, other events, Here's the list of cancellations. As you can see, it's just pointless to go through it all. We stopped at 290. Christ United Church in North Huntingdon canceled. Lots of churches on this list. So, for all intents and purposes, if it was scheduled for tonight or tomorrow, consider it unscheduled. Let's now go back to the... Uh command post in the Strip District. That's where people are working on keeping the roads open so that the emergency vehicles can get through. Now this is really an enormous task and we're very fortunate to have Commissioner Forrester joining us live from there. Commissioner, how are things, how are things going at the command post right now? Well, I really think things are going as well as could be expected. We were well prepared for this emergency. Director Moses has every available person out working around the clock. All of our county roads are open at this time. However, we're asking all people Please stay home. Weather conditions are so terrible that we are urging people to stay home, even though our county roads are open. Now to Saturday night, 11 p.m. Pittsburgh is a city immobilized. Our weather forecasters are tracking the storm, teamed up with the Carnegie Science Center. Kevin Benson, who started our weather coverage on Channel 11 News Saturday morning, will join us in just a few minutes. Dennis Bowman is on duty as well. Dennis, what is the latest on Blizzard 93? Margaret, I tell you, this is more than just your average snowstorm. We've been watching this thing all day, and it's like watching a hurricane. Look at this thing build and just flow right up top of Pittsburgh here. The barometric pressure readings have been so low near the center of this storm that the average barometer that you have there at, at home, for example, wouldn't even register it. 28.51 inches of mercury near the center of the storm. And uh, this thing has just been hammering us all day long with lots of snow. Now, if I were you sitting there watching this telecast, I'd be asking two questions. Number one, how much more are we going to get? And number two, when is it all going to stop? So why don't we cut right to the chase and address those two issues here? Uh, first of all, we expect another four to six inches of snow. That's how much more will fall between now and midday. And that basically is when the blizzard is going to end late morning tomorrow with some light snow continuing into the afternoon. So another four to six inches in the overnight period and some very gusty winds. The most snowfall in one day, the record had been 22 inches on December 17th in 1890. That has now fallen by the boards with today's storm. We're up to about 24 inches now. And uh, the most in one storm, 27.4 inches of snow. And that was spread out over three days in November in 1950. And it looks like we're gonna take a shot at that here in the overnight period. Dennis said another half foot is expected by midday tomorrow. Right now the snow has appeared to have uh, taken a break, but the wind's still hammering us pretty hard. Right behind me is Penn Avenue. You can see the Pittsburgh Public Works crews have scraped off a layer, but as soon as it, uh, that's done, the snow keeps coming down. Here's a quick look at, to see if the road crews weren't out here. Yeah, you got about a good foot of snow there. As you said, we are in front of the command post. Uh, for Allegheny County. We're going to speak with uh, some officials 
uh, with the command post uh, shortly here. But first, a quick look at how the snowstorm is continuing its stranglehold on the region's roads. Some of the faces of Blizzard 93, a desolate downtown, stranded vehicles buried in white. A few, however, still crawl along, but only with extreme caution. Meanwhile, PennDOT crews continue their assault, focusing on clearing out interstates, including Pittsburgh's parkways, all in an attempt to merely stay ahead of the snowfall and to keep these main arteries open for emergency vehicles. Side streets and roads, on the other hand, remain extremely hazardous in some places. All in all, though, once daylight ends, it, motorists apparently took heed in all the warnings and for the most part are staying home but for those who aren't now believe it or not there are those braving the arctic like temperatures on foot for example paul connors and christine nordic here in perrysville uh, the car is buried and we didn't feel like digging it out so you're doing a walk yeah where are you heading uh, down her dad's house make sure they're all right down there i kind of like it i got my boss called me and told me I didn't have to come in to work tomorrow, so I'm going to Meantime, at Pittsburgh International, people found any place they could to sleep as the airport was closed. No flights in, no flights out. All day long, we've been telling you to stay inside, and it really is the best advice. But we want to show you just what it looks like outside, and so we've sent Kevin Benson out into the blizzard, and he is live just outside of the... Channel 11 Studios. Kevin. Margaret, you and Dennis stay indoors. I'll, I'll handle the tough stuff out here, okay? Out here where it's cold and windy and really blowing around out here, folks. Wind gusts are gusting as high as 40 miles per hour. It looks like the snow has let up somewhat, but I wanted just to give you a feel for what's happening out here. Earlier today, we were showing you some of these snow drifts out here, and we still have plenty of snow drifts, even though we've been trying to plow the Channel 11 parking lot to have a place for our employees that are trying to make it to work to get here. Here's just an example of one of the drifts here. Let me find the highest part of it. Of course, we have a, uh, a heavy yard stick here, 36 inches worth, and that just about swallows it all up right there. There's about a 30-inch drift for you. And as we started Sunday morning, March 14th, 8 a.m., Western Pennsylvanians are digging out. All over Pennsylvania, people are socked in by the storm of the century. Now, this storm is definitely one for the record books. In fact, the amount of snowfall in the Pittsburgh area yesterday broke the previous record set back in 1890. 23.6 inches fell from 7 yesterday morning when the storm began until midnight. And that is the most ever snowfall in a 24-hour period. It's also been a deadly storm. At least 42 people have died. Now, most of them in Florida, where tornadoes struck several counties. One person is dead in the Pittsburgh area, a South Hills man who suffered a heart attack while shuffling snow yesterday. Hundreds of airline travelers have been stranded at Pittsburgh International since the blizzard hit. So when are the flights going to start up again? Well, our Jennifer Ann Koviak has been at the airport all night following the story. She joins us now with a live report. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Lori. You hit the question right on the head there. Everybody's waking up this morning, me and 5,000 other stranded passengers because of this horrible weather. They're waking up, they're stretching, they're trying to look for some breakfast. The first question on their mind is when can I get out of here? Let me show you a little bit of video from last night, show you some work of people have, that have been trying to make things at least passable. That's the only movement that has been going on on the runways. No flights have been going on since yesterday at 2 o'clock. Some plows have been out to try to keep on top of the weather as much as possible and keep the runways as clear as possible. But people accepting that they are just not getting out of here last night tried to bunk down wherever they could. Hardly any motel rooms were available by the time this all happened because people booked them so quickly soon after the, the blizzard really hit. So these people did the best they could. You can see that meant for a lot of people trying to bundle up their clothes and make pillows and sleep on chairs. We're trying to dig out from underneath the big one, the big storm of 1993, the blizzard of 1993. Now, you know, we've heard from a lot of people who talk about the big storm of 1950. And some of the old timers call us and say, you guys don't know what snow is. The big one in 1950, that was the big one. This is kid stuff. Well, all we can do is present to you the numbers, folks. Let me do that right now because this kind of puts it into some type of perspective here. This is the greatest Pittsburgh snowfall in one storm. Take a look at November. Now, I want you to look at that closely. That storm in 1950, that was November 24th, 25th, and 26th. 
The number was 27.4 inches. Now, granted, it was higher, a higher number, but if you look at March 13th, we're talking about one day versus three days. March uh, 19th, or I should say March 13th there, 23.6 inches of snow. Let me show you this that we just put together here, and here are some snowfall amounts from across the region just to try to put this thing into some perspective for you. Pittsburgh International Airport, 24 inches, almost 24 inches. Let's just round it off at something like 23.8. Let's go to 24 inches of snow and, uh, at uh, Pittsburgh International Airport, that is. Take a look over here in Latrobe. 36 inches of snow. It's blowing and it's drifting everywhere. You have 36 inches on the ground in Westmoreland County. You could end up with three to six more inches of snow. Johnstown, 25 inches blowing and drifting. Dubois, 24 inches on the ground, five foot drifts. Another area community is trying to get things back to normal the day after. Our Lori Penko of our Westmoreland County Mobile Newsroom is in Greensburg. Lori, what's the situation there? Well, Lori, it just started snowing again here in Westmoreland County, but it's the wind that's really still causing the problems here. With two and a half to three feet of snow on the ground, the wind is really stirring things up, creating snow drifts. You can see this one over here, how high it is. And I'm told that in some places, the snow drifts are as high as five to six feet, making the roads just impassable. The county remains in a snow emergency, and police are still advising everyone to stay off the roads. Most major highways like I-70 and the Turnpike remain closed. And secondary roads, especially in the Laurel Mountain region, I'm told, if you don't have to be on them, just stay home, stay warm. Westmoreland County 911 says it's had dozens of calls from stranded motorists stuck on highways all over the area. In response to those calls, the Red Cross has set up several shelters around Westmoreland County. I'm told that many people spent the night in those shelters. And I guess the question this morning is when they'll be able to get back on the road. The National Guard has also been helping police in Westmoreland County get to people stuck along the highway. And in some cases, in East Huntington Township, for example, I'm told that police had to use snowmobiles to get to people stuck along the highway. Some incredible stories here this morning. But luckily, Lori, no reports of any serious injuries here in Westmoreland County. Reporting live in Greensburg, Lori Penko, Channel 11 News. Lori, I'll bet you just about everyone has a snow-related story to tell. <laughs> You're not kidding. It's crazy out here. I'm told that in Lower Burl, some 200 folks in town for Western Pennsylvania Junior Wrestling Championships got stuck at the high school there last night. They set up a Red Cross shelter there and they spent the night. Also, the Red Cross people tell me that a Mennonite family traveling new, near New Stanton got stuck and they had eight horses traveling with them. So the Red Cross not only had to find a place for the family to stay, but the horses as well. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of incredible stories. Of course, we had to spend the night at the newsroom, so we're right in there with it. <laughs> the blizzard may have brought us down for a time, but not out, as the local area is bouncing back by 6 o'clock on the evening of Sunday, March 14th. <laughs> blizzard 93 virtually paralyzed our entire area. You can see from Chopper 11 from the sky to the roadway, the storm put a heavy clamp on Pennsylvania. We are now blanketed with anywhere from 24 to 36 inches of snow. The local area now going through the process of digging out. Good evening, everyone. I'm Margaret Shortridge. Blizzard 93 will not soon be forgotten. 14 people in Pennsylvania died, one in the Pittsburgh area, during the worst storm to sweep through our area in a century. Pennsylvania is still under a state of emergency. Many roads, including part of the Turnpike, are impassable. And in addition, tonight we have a slew of school closings to report. The storm hit so hard and so quickly that many motorists were forced to abandon their cars. Drivers just left cars and trucks along the roadway. This is along Interstate 70 near Wheeling, West Virginia. The abandoned vehicles created major problems for both drivers and crews trying to clear the roads. Here's a view from Chopper 11 of the Turnpike exit in Cranberry Township. The Turnpike in our area is still closed at this hour. We are told that anyone getting on the Turnpike will be stopped by state troopers and face fines. The only part of the Pennsylvania Turnpike that is now open is in eastern Pennsylvania. The thousands of passengers who have been camped out all night at Pittsburgh International are hoping to fly out soon. The airport is still officially closed. 
but the airlines have scheduled flights for this evening. We will have a live report in a few moments to update you on the situation at Pittsburgh International. Well, Kevin Benson has been consulting minute to minute with the <clears throat> Carnegie Science Center since the storm started during Channel 11 News Saturday morning. He joins us now with an update. Kevin, is the worst over? Yes, indeed, Mark, it appears that the worst is over. In fact, all watches and warnings and advisories have, in fact, been discontinued. Our news team continues our live coverage on the scene. Is Dave Clark standing by live by the Parkway East between Oakland and Squirrel Hill. Dave, how are the roads? I have to say, it looks, looks fairly clear behind hey, you. Margaret, I'm standing out here right near the Oakland exit. You can see cars are flying along here along the Parkway East. As you said, we're right near the Oakland exit. The road is dry, it's clear. Cars are flying by just like a normal day both ways. It's interesting to watch. We got around pretty good, even though there's still some problems with the secondary roads. What was interesting is that the city and the county snow plows have been out and busy. Look, there's another truck flying by. A lot of people are venturing out on the roads, but anyway. City and county snow plows have been out and busy, and they have been affected. We, effective. We'll show you some video now of the snow plows. This was out near Mount Troy Road a couple of hours ago. The plow was moving along very, very well, and there are about 100 snow plows out, plenty of equipment. I talked to Allegheny County Maintenance Chief Joe Moses. He told me he's pretty happy with the progress they're making with the roads. Well, there is some good news tonight for the hundreds of people stranded at Pittsburgh International Airport. There is some movement. Our Jennifer Ankoviak has been there all weekend. She joins us live again at Pittsburgh International. Jennifer, when are the planes or have they started flying yet? Good evening, Margaret. There's some good news and some bad news out here. I wish I had some better. The good news is two Delta flights did get off the ground here. They had some daylight. The runway was cleared enough, just the one, and they were able to get off the ground. The bad the bad news is the county has decided to close the airport until Monday. We've just heard that word now from Pat Boyle, who is the assistant director of aviation. He says that they were working on the runways. The snow is not the problem now. They moved it off, but they had some problems with some landing lights. That was what led into their decision to completely shut the airport down until Monday. Sunday night, March 14th, the work continues to get the Pittsburgh area back to normal. While people in our area recover from this record-setting storm, hundreds of workers are continuing the chore, the giant chore, of clearing off our roadways. Dave Clark is standing by live right now and joins us from Pittsburgh's north side. Well, Margaret, I'm on Phineas Street here on the north side. You can't really see it real well, but this is a typical street, as everybody knows. A lot of cars along this street are still plowed in by the snow. But if you've been out at all, if you've ventured out, you know that, that the road crews have done a pretty good job in cleaning up some of the streets. They've been working very, very hard. Uh, the job is far from over. And don't start thinking that if you do go out and uh, hit the roads for the morning rush hour, you're going to be problem free. But they have made significant progress as they've methodically tackled this massive job. Like clockwork, another load of salt is piled onto a city truck. Then the trucks hit the streets again. And again, yet another truck is loaded with salt. Driver Joe Trojan of the north side says he's already dumped over 12 tons of salt today alone. It's rough. It's no picnic, believe me. You know, you get the people with no snow tires on it kind of thing. They tie the traffic. They are making progress in cleaning the major streets in the Pittsburgh area, but the secondary roads are still a problem. Driver Jim McGraw figures he covered 130 miles yesterday alone. Well, everybody wants to be first, you know, having their street cleared. And then as we go along plowing the streets, they shovel it right back out on the streets. So, uh, you know, yesterday we were heroes, today we're something else. Well, these guys will really be heroes if they can have Pittsburgh streets clean and safe for rush hour tomorrow. Joe Trojan says they'll do their best. Well, the storms let up. We let Mother Nature take its course now. A little bit of sun, a little bit of salt. We should be... Uh... 100%. These guys are working pretty hard. I understand they're going to be putting, uh, some of the road crews are going to be putting some sort of calcium mixture on the road tonight. It is bitter, bitterly cold out here, as you, as you can imagine. And this calcium mixture will help, we're told, to prevent some of the slippery, sliding, uh, freezing effect on the roads. Margaret, back to you. Okay, Dave, I know that different departments are responsible for cleaning different roads. Yeah. How, how do the county roads look tonight? I talked to Joe Moses, head of the county maintenance department. He said the county roads are doing, the county crews are doing very, very well. They're moving methodically and 
very effectively. And not only are they doing well with the county roads here in the Pittsburgh area, but they're also helping some of the smaller communities like Homestead and uh, some of the other Richland townships like that that really ha are having problems handling it on their own. The Allegheny County Road crews are going up there and helping them as well. So uh, they're pitching in and they're doing a good job. And from what we've been able to see getting around, they've been quite effective. And hopefully rush hour will be uh, not too bad tomorrow. Margaret, back to you. Hopefully, indeed. Thanks yeah. very much. Dave Clark reporting for us live tonight from the north side. Well, now we have an update on some of the other major roads that are here in our area. Tonight, the Pennsylvania Turnpike is still closed in our area. The Turnpike is closed from Monroeville to Carlisle. The Turnpike is open, though, in eastern Pennsylvania. Now, the Turnpike is also open along the Cranberry entrance. The cars are allowed to get on at the Cranberry entrance and head west towards the Ohio Turnpike. As you can tell, late tonight, cars were getting on the Turnpike in Cranberry. Interstate 79 is also opened. It opened around 2 p.m. this afternoon. I-79 is pretty clear in the Pittsburgh area, but as you drive further to the north and to the south, as you get away from the city, I-79 is still snow covered. And as you can see from these pictures, Interstate 279 is looking pretty good. A lot of spots are clear, so if you're planning on driving on I-279, you should not have too much of a problem. It's the same with I-376. That's looking very clear tonight. The crews have been busy out trying to clear the roads, getting them salted and plowed, ready for the work day on Monday morning. But things are a little bit different at Pittsburgh International Airport tonight. Only one runway is up and operating. A pilot tells Channel 11 News that two runways were open late this afternoon, but a plane hit some runway lights, and so then that runway was later closed. Now here are the planes, some of the first planes that were able to take off today. But as you can imagine, the airlines are operating on a very limited basis. Some passengers are still stranded at the airport now. Others are wondering if they should go to the airport, if their plane will take off. So often when disaster strikes, countless heroes emerge. Men and women who go the extra mile to help out people they don't even know. It would be fair to say that this weekend, some of Pittsburgh area's true heroes are its hundreds of paramedics. Donna Foreman joins us live now from Ross Township, where some of the emergency crews have been working around the clock there as well. Donna. Margaret, I'm standing outside the Ross Westview EMS headquarters. It's been a busy place this weekend, like so many others like it across the region. This has been the type of weekend where we have really put our emergency personnel to the test, and they have more than delivered. With chains strapped to ambulance tires and close contact with road crews, the Ross Westview Emergency Services crew answered 25 calls in 12 hours. Six of those calls came from women in labor. So we were able to call them directly on the radio and have the plows lead us right into medical emergencies. So it really facilitated a much better response for us. Ross Westview EMS Director J.R. Henry says he and his crew of paramedics have gone virtually without sleep this weekend and never has getting from point A to point B been so tough. With weather like this, uh, no response is going to be that fast. We get there as fast as possible, and uh, the road crews were trying to do the best they could to keep the main arteries open. Mostly all the people that had chest pains and that were having heart attacks came by medics. With emergency helicopter flights grounded by weather, hospitals like Mercy relied on fast-acting paramedics not only for delivering patients, but snowbound doctors and nurses, too. Above and beyond the call of duty, J.R. Henry doesn't think so. Well, we certainly appreciate that, but uh, that's what we're here for, and we're uh, certainly happy to help others uh, in times of uh, disasters, and certainly this was a disaster. Now, I have to tell you that J.R. Henry is just being a little bit modest. I also found out that this weekend he answered a call on foot. He trudged through deep snow and backyards to help a neighbor who was having chest pain. But those stories of the cleanup continue Monday, March 15th. The aftermath from Blizzard 93. Things are slowly getting back to normal as western Pennsylvania digs out from a killer blizzard. It is being called the storm of the century. Now before it was all over, the storm dumped between 25 and 36 inches of snow in our area. 
That meant it was time for the cleanup to begin. Road crews worked round the clock to get the major arteries back into shape before this morning's rush hour. And for the first time in two days, motorists can once again travel the entire length of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The Pike and other major highways were closed over the weekend after heavy snow made them impassable. Well, the death toll from the weekend blizzard has now risen to 27 here in Pennsylvania, many of them the result of overexertion. Governor Bob Casey made that announcement this afternoon before surveying the storm damage in the northeastern part of the state. The governor says while we're not out of the woods as of yet, Pennsylvania has a lot to be proud of. The reason why it turned out as well as it did from our point of view was the dedication of members of the Pennsylvania State Police, the uh, National Guard, the employees of the Department of Transportation. Many city streets, especially ones on steep hills, are not yet completely cleared for cars and people, and some, like this one on Mount Washington, are fit only for children with sleds. City public works crews continue to salt these streets, but the salt often doesn't work at sub-freezing temperatures. Mountainous regions of the area were the hardest hit by the storm. That includes Westmoreland County, and our mobile newsroom has spent the day on the road. Lori Penko joins us live now from Greensburg with the latest. Lori? Well, David, Margaret, tonight the blizzard cleanup is being blamed for a fatal freak accident here in Westmoreland County. In Penn Township this afternoon, a 31-year-old man was killed after being crushed by his tractor. Police say Raymond Earhart was riding the tractor on a snowy embankment when it toppled over and fell on top of him. He was apparently preparing to plow some snow on the family farm when the accident happened. Now, his death is the only weather-related death here in Westmoreland County so far, luckily. Meantime, elsewhere in the mountain region of the county tonight, people are still digging out and getting out for the first time. The cleanup is anything but easy in the Laurel Mountain region. Here, the blizzard dumped as much as three feet in some places, creating huge snow drifts like this. For many, like Merle Gerhardt, a plow, not a shovel, is the only way to clear buried driveways. Well, they was higher, but they settled now some. Yeah, eight feet, I suppose. Now they're better than six feet. For others, heavy equipment that can scoop up the mounds of snow clears a path to freedom for the first time since the blizzard began. We were trapped here. We couldn't get out with a car. No way. But the going is still difficult today for those driving the big rigs. As the Pennsylvania Turnpike and Interstate 70 reopened after being shut down nearly two days, some truckers stranded by the storm had a tough time getting started. Mike Gillespie of New Jersey got stuck at this truck stop along I-70 Saturday. The blizzard is putting Gillespie and many other truckers two days behind. I could hear them grocery houses uh, crying for some uh, food. Yeah. It's going to delay a lot of people. Anybody hurt? At Westmoreland County 911, where stranded dispatchers answered thousands of calls during the blizzard, emergency officials are totaling up the cost. In an attempt to get federal emergency money, state officials are asking Westmoreland and other counties to find out exactly what communities are spending to clear the roads. A price tag that officials here say is tens of thousands of dollars for most areas. Their cost of uh, tr doubled or tripled in size from what their normal uh, removal is because of the amount of snow that we've had. And I should also mention that the Westmoreland County Courthouse, which was closed today because of the storm, will reopen tomorrow. Reporting live in Greensburg, Laurie Penko, Channel 11 News. Well, Laurie, what about other businesses? How are they coping in Westmoreland County? Well, most of the businesses we've seen have reopened, and I must say they're doing quite a business after the storm. Mm. All right, that's the story from our Westmoreland County mobile newsroom. Where, as you saw, there is three feet or more of snow. Right. So we thought we'd show you what's going on in other surrounding counties today. Let's head north, begin with Butler County. Snow plows were out in full force today, paving the way for anxious shoppers to get back to business. These pictures were taken at the new Moraine Point Shopping Center in Butler Township. Beaver County residents still digging out from the storm there, but they don't seem to mind it too much. In fact, these kids had the right idea. They spent the day having some fun in the snow, and elsewhere snow plows were busy keeping streets in downtown Beaver in good shape, as you see right there. Now let's head east to Indiana County and take a look at how those folks are coping with the snow. This man decided to pitch in and clear out his neighbor's driveway in downtown Indiana. It was a winter wonderland. Even the Jimmy Stewart statue looked a little cold and lonely today. From Channel 11 News, the background report. And the issue tonight, miracles in the snow. 
When the blizzard hit, people in our area really got together, and the stories are amazing. Our Vince Gerasoli has just two. Township crews filed this here. They said there was no, they couldn't realize how I got through. And there's a part of paramedic Steve Waugh still wondering too. In his pickup, in the middle of a blizzard, he somehow navigated this steep, winding Washington County Passage near Claysville to save a man's life. Right here is where I got stuck. At this point in time, I, I could see halfway over my windshield, and that was it. I was at least up over my windshield. So Steve, without gloves and wearing only a windbreaker, walked the remaining mile in freezing, blowing snow. I was going through drifts. At one time, I was in a drift up to my chest, and then I had to back out. As Steve arrived at the farmhouse, he realized only a helicopter could safely transport the man inside to a hospital. By phone, he navigated the crew to a nearby hill, helping to carry 75-year-old Tom Collins, uncontrollably doubled over from stomach ulcer complications to safety. And I'm laying on that stretch and seeing Steve trudge along, and that snow looked like it was up to his waist, you know. And I thought, boy, we may not even make it, you know, but, but he, he's, a, he's a heck of a guy. A heck of a modest guy, too, who says the rescue was all in a day's work. When I was trained as an EMT, I was always trained as what if. What if I could have got out there and saved a man's life? What if it would have been my dad or your dad or what if? Brianna Oram was born in the middle of a blizzard, two weeks early with complications. Paramedics, escorted by a plow, barely got her mother to Washington Hospital in time for the birth. Well, when a call came in and they described what happened with the umbilical cord coming first, that's probably one of the most feared complications in obstetrics and often Years what happens in the hospital, it can still be uh, a catastrophe for the baby. Breathing complications made it necessary to send Brianna to Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. The weather barred helicopter transport, so three snow plows escorted Brianna in an ambulance from the arms of her mother to an infant ventilator in Pittsburgh. They said that she was strong, that she fought it. Many others fought the blizzard of 93 too, some with miraculous stories to tell. And there it is, the storm that changed the lives of many people. We hope you enjoyed this look back at the blizzard of 93. We also hope that this videotape can be a piece of history that you can look back at years from now and remember what it was like during four snowy days in western Pennsylvania. For the Channel 11 News Team, I'm Peggy Finnegan. I'm David Johnson.